Hello students. In today's class, we will read cells EMF and internal resistance. For us, it is very much important to know what is cell, how is it made and why do we need a cell. Then there will be a function of the cell which will be there and it is termed as EMF and when this EMF is expanded, it is electromotive forces. Okay, and then we will come to another concept that is the internal resistance. So far we have read the resistance, something which is providing a hurdle or hindrance to the flow of charge. Similarly, every system have its own resistance, its own hindrance. So we will read what is internal resistance in a cell and how much it is there and how it affects its properties. So let's get started with the cell. So cell is a simple device which is used to maintain and steady current in an electric circuit. Okay. And mostly these cells are known as electrolytic cells or here, these cells having the electrolyte in them and electrodes in them. A solution, please come to the figure here. This is electrolyte. What is electrolyte? Solution having electron dispersing. Um, solution having electron dispersing solute in it. I know electron dispersing solute. Mostly you have read in chemistry that electrolytes have copper sulfate in it. Uh, when this copper sulfate is added with water, it forms the ions like there can be ions like H plus, OH minus, SO4 2 minus or copper 2 plus. These kind of ions are created in it. Then other than that, we have seen the uh, example of electrolyte having zinc sulfate, KCl, HCl or any other potassium halide. So if I have given one example of potassium halide. It's been KCl. Another it can be KBr, Ki. Okay. Then we can have the bases like NaOH and many more. So all these uh, solutes when added in water or there is any other uh, chemical mixed with them they will start forming the ions these ions are basically positive and negative what is ions like I'll explain one of the very much important phenomena is ionization which needs to be understood and this is the basics for our electrolytic cell to work so see over here, I'll take the space over here, ion. Ions are formed by a process called ionization. Ionization for one of the atom is loss of an electron. And for the neighboring atom or another atom, it is the gain of electron. The atom which loses the electron is termed as X plus, whereas the electron which gain, like atom which gains the electron is denoted by a minus.
one of the example which i can give you is of nacl where when this is separated we get na plus and cl minus from here we are getting one electron which is transferred to cl to form such a bond okay so these are the ions when these ions are combining they are forming a molecule so this is the ions and ion formation ionization this happens in an electrolyte now coming back to the concept of cell this particular cell have two electrodes one is positive one is negative as there is formation of ions in electrolyte positive and negative electrodes play an important role as we have seen in the electrostatics that a positive charge attracts negative charge and we have seen vice versa what happens a positive charge always attracts a negative ion negative ion and a negative electrode always attracts a positive ion so what exactly is happening inside the cell coming back to the figure just see it we will assume that this is a positive charge this is sorry positive electrode and this is negative electrode and here we are having x o electrolyte this x o is converted as x minus or o plus or vice versa any way we can take okay like we have i'll take one practical example so that it's easy to understand we will go with nacl nacl in a water solution this nacl forms ions like n plus cl minus now as per to this rule this rule of positive and negative attraction this na if it is here it will not get attracted to this electrode okay but the whole na will be attracted to this electrode the whole na will try to come and accumulate over here okay similarly the whole cl minus will come to this side and accumulate here so the whole negative charge will get to this side and whole neg positive charge will get to this side because this is a negative electrode and this is positive electrode so because these charges are coming the extra electrons are coming here the flow of current will be from positive to negative electrode from positive to negative electrode why because our electrons move our electrons move cl minus is having one extra electron one extra electron which is given by the sodium okay so this extra electron when comes to this electrode it travels through this wire and it travels in this path okay so this is how when two electrodes are dipped in an electrolytic solution the charges are produced and charges continue to flow then there will come a particular point which is known as equilibrium point where after we will see that there is a flow of the charges which is steady in nature like amount of charges per unit time is constant so it have produced an um, situation a situation which is known as uniform current uniform current flow okay why uniform current flow because current i equals to dq upon dt this is constant so our i is uniform our i is again constant okay now let's go to the next point in the understanding of cell
so the third point is all about this electrolyte and how we are seeing the behavior of electrolyte so positive and negative electrodes are there and these electrodes are dipped in the solution what sort of, of a solution it is it is an electrolytic solution the electrodes exchange charges with the electrolyte that's how the motion is going on and that's how the circuit is completed okay this is electrolyte here are the electrodes and they combinedly work that's how the circuit is completed next the positive electrode has a potential difference of v plus which is greater than zero between itself and the electrolyte solution immediately adjacent to its it is marked a in the figure see a in the figure what they are saying is that the potential of this electrode is v plus with compared to the potential present here as i have said all the negative charges will try to move towards a so ultimately with respect to the electrolytic solution over here over in this place this electrode will be having a positive potential similarly similarly the negative electrode develops a negative potential that is v minus that is v minus which is also greater than zero relative to the electrolyte adjacent to it marked b in the figure see one is having a negative potential and other one is having a positive potential but in both the cases what we have observed is that potential is greater or equal to zero and another thing which we have read is the statement called relative so here potentials can never be positive and can never be negative okay try to understand this particular point very clearly what i am saying is a potential is not positive potential and a potential is not negative potential but when we are keeping the two potential at that point its comparing to the other potential can be positive or can be negative so here we are having two electrode these electrodes are just electrodes but when they are dipped inside the electrolytic solution the electrolysis happens and they forms lots of electrons and some electrons tend to move towards a particular electrode that electrode relative to the concentration of electrons present in the electrolytic solution becomes becomes neg like positive so i'll explain this positive and negative potential in the next slide little more with diagram so that you understand what exactly the positive magnitude of potential or the negative magnitude of potential means next point when there is no current the electrolyte has the same potential throughout so that the potential difference between p and n that is v plus and v minus equals to v plus plus v minus like positive potential plus negative potential now it's time for us to understand how this uh, our system is getting our positive potential and negative potential so positive and 
नेगेटिव पोटेंशियल See, we have a circuit in general, which is formed of electrodes and electrolyte. Electrodes are made up of metal, and metals have free electron, free electron, and they provide mobility. two electrons and as well as they provide medium to electrons to move from point a to point b this is the property of our electrode now electrolytes these are chemical chemicals in nature for example i can give zinc sulfate as i have explained before copper sulfate naoh nacl these are the solution they are added in the solvent in suitable solvent always remember we cannot use any solvent it should be suitable the combination forms a solution and this solution is termed as electrolytes why do this solution is termed as electrolyte because these electrolytes have tendency to undergo electrolysis tendency to undergo electrolysis okay so once it is going under the process of electrolysis electrolysis as we will segregate the term electro plus lysis okay electro implies electrons and lysis imply breaking down so that says that breaking up of electron from its parent atom breaking up of electron from its parent atom so that is what happening in the electrolyte now when we are having our electrolyte it is having electrons plus solution so in this solution we are having electrons as one of the component these electrons tend to move toward tends to move towards electrode having lesser electrons so there is there is less repulsion like there are many shorts of atom few atoms have a uh, less number of electrons few have more number of electrons so there are two electrodes present can be of the same material can be of the different material so they tend to move towards one particular electrode okay if we make a diagram like this is our electrolytic solution and in this we are having these electrodes okay and they are connected by via wire so this medium works as a wire because it has so many electrons in it and these electrons are denser near one electrode let's assume they are having more density near the electrode one electrode one okay so now this this electrode is having more electron density here and so these electrons will show their own repulsion what this metal will do this metal will take up the electron and will start passing this electron from this particular pathway like this 
to this elect, uh, electrode and from here again it will get dispersed in the same medium and this cycle of movement of electron will continue cycle of movement of electron will continue this cycle of movement of electron will result in production of current and this production of current will continue will continue till there is production of electrons to show mobility there is production of electrons to show mobility okay now are uh, coming back to the relative potentials the electrode surrounded with more electrons will have relatively positive potential relatively relatively positive potential so the magnitude of the potential magnitude of potential will be positive whereas electrode which is less surrounded by electrons will have relatively negative potential relative negative potential so the magnitude of potential over here will contain a negative sign but magnitude will be greater than 0 see i'll give you the example there is plus 10 volt and minus 10 volt okay here the plus shows that it is surrounded with the more electron and here minus shows that it is surrounded with the less uh, electrons but the magnitude of both the electrodes is same so both are having the same potential both are having the same potential now if we say this is 9 volt and this is minus 13 volt in this case we will not say that this is having lesser potential we will say that this is having negative potential but this negative potential is greater than positive potential positive potential because over here plus and minus shows the negative and positive not the smaller number and bigger number whereas the number shows the potential higher the number higher is the potential but potential can either be positive or can it be negative okay so make this very much clear the statement you need to use in case of potentials is i'll write over here always make sure that you are using such a statement while describing such concepts so that there is a clarity maintained any potential provided shows magnitude and polarity of electrode sign gives polarity 
number gives magnitude sign doesn't show a smaller or a bigger potential okay hope you have understood the concept of potential in an electrolytic cell very well moving next this difference is called electromotive force previously what we have read was that when the current becomes uniform there is no change in the potential and the potential can be given by v plus plus v minus which is greater than 0 which is greater than 0 this whole summation is given by e this e denotes emf already expanded emf for you emf is electromotive force the force which is providing motion to the electron the difference of the potential between the two electrodes provides a force to these electrons to move from one electrode to another electrode okay see as i have explained this electrode a this electrode a being positive and this electron b being negative here we are having much electrons these electrons will start getting attracted and they will move over here so this particular uh, potential difference between a and b is helping these electrons to travel from a electrode to b electrode and create some force create some current that force which helps them to create some current is electromotive force now e actually a potential difference not a force it is not a force but it is a potential difference between a and b then why is it called electromotive force the name emf used because of historical reasons and given at a time when phenomena was not clearly understood this name emf electromotive force was given at a point where the scientist or the physicist were not aware of the phenomena were not aware of the potential differences so emf is actually the potential difference between electrode a and electrode b secondly we can by reading all this we can say that the historians or the historical physicist or the historical scientist gave the name emf to this system because emf is electromotive force and the electrons in the electrolyte were moving from one electrode to another electrode so they thought that there is some undefined force which we are not aware but that force is pushing these electrons from the point a to the point b somewhere something which is motivating these electrons to move so they combined and they said it is nothing but some electromotive force which is helping these electrons to move from another from one electrode to another electrode and creating the current now significance of the electromotive force let us consider one resistor r connected across the cell as shown in this figure we have symbolized the electrolytic cell okay the positive electrode is given by a longer arm positive electrode given by a longer arm whereas the negative electrode is denoted by a shorter arm okay so this is the symbol of the whole electro lytic cell okay 
Now across this electrolytic cell we have connected a resistor having resistance of R ohms and current flows across the R from C and D. Okay. Current is flowing from this system. Okay. And it is flowing through this resistor also. The steady current is maintained because current flows from N to P through the electrolyte. Clearly across electrolyte same current flows throughout the electrolyte but from N to P whereas through R it flows from P to N in reverse direction. Okay. The electrolyte through which current flows has a finite resistance of small r called internal resistance. Okay, this is again a very important point to understand. See over here I have took a blank page to make you understand the concept of flow of these electrons current and the resistance or I'll say the internal resistance okay so what we are going to see in this blank page are the three things flow of current flow of electrons and internal resistance okay so over here Make a note, note that current and electrons do not flow in same direction. Current and electrons do not flow in same direction. Okay. So this is an important note. If you have remembered this, you can solve any problem. And next topic, what we are going to read is Kirchhoff's law, which will be well understood if you remember that current and electrons don't flow in a similar direction. Okay. See, I will make the diagram once again, that electrolytic diagram, so that there is a good understanding. So see what we had over there was it tank and this tank was containing the electrolytic solution okay this is the electrolytic solution the tank is containing electrolyte next to it we had two electrodes like this and these two electrodes were further connected through the wire and there is a connection of the resistance registered in it and then this was the system. This point is termed as P and this point is termed as N. This electrode is a positive electrode and this electrode is a negative electrode and here are the more electron relative to which we got what? We have got the positive potential of the A electrode and B electrode. Okay. Electrode A is having positive potential. Whereas electrode B is having negative potential. Okay, now this is the resistor R, this is point P and this is point N. So, basically, understand, pay attention. This is having positive potential, more electrons, less electrons. What will happen? From electrode A to electrode B, electrons will flow electrons will flow so here across the electrolyte the same current flows through the electrolyte 
but from n to p from n to p that is from this point to this point the current is flowing through the electrolyte n to p okay not over here make the changes from n to p inside the electro inside the electrolyte electrolyte and inside this electrolyte current is flowing through n to p okay but outside the electrolyte we will see there is only one electrical equipment through this electrical equipment through this resistor through resistor capital r the current is flowing current is flowing from p to n that was the statement we have read in the previous slide just you can go back by 2 minutes in the video and we will see this statement written that across the electrolyte same current flows through the electrolyte but from n to p whereas through r it flows from p to n okay like from n to p through the electrolyte it is compulsory if there is flow of current outside the electrolyte and inside the electrolyte making it a complete structure or a cold uh, closed circuit or a closed circuit in an open circuit there is no flow of current so this is happening so in electrolyte through which the current flows has some finite resistance okay this electrolyte itself electrolyte have its own resistance if the current is having 10 ampere magnitude and it is flowing the whole 10 ampere will not flow from n to p because there is some resistance some resistance which will stop the whole current to flow so it have its own resistance because it is its own resistance its internal problem so this is called as internal resistance internal resistance of the battery or the cell of battery or cell okay so this internal resistance is given by small r and hereafter we will read the properties of internal resistance and various formula which can calculate internal resistance of a given battery or cell for us now consider first situation where capital r is infinite capital r is infinite so that i equals to v upon r is zero something divided by infinite gives zero and something divided by zero gives infinite i'll write here v divided by r if r equals to infinity v upon infinity gives us zero but if r equals to zero v upon r gives us v upon zero that is infinity okay so where v is the potential difference between p and n now v potential difference p between p and a plus potential difference between a and b plus potential difference between b and n that is e what where were the points a b p and n i'll make again a small diagram these were the electrodes connected with an this okay now this point over here was in the electrolyte was a this point over here near the electrode 2 was b this point is p and this point is n okay 
so these are the points so what we have did we did potential difference between this point and this point we have taken it as one one then p our a and b potential difference between a and b and then potential difference between b and n if we are calculating all these three potential differences we are getting the potential difference of the cell or the potential difference of the battery okay now emf is given as potential difference between the positive and negative electrodes so in this these are the electrodes between these two potential difference between these two electrodes will be given by epsilon that is emf but condition is in an open circuit where this is not connected by the resistance see over here i have not drawn a resistor so in this situation we are calculating the emf and in this situation as the circuit is open there is no flow of current when no current is flowing through the circuit only in a closed circuit current flows if you take a plastic pencil or hair stick okay and you will insert in an electrical socket mostly you will not get the current because plastic is an insulator and there will not be the formation of a proper closed circuit but in case you are inserting your finger in the electrical plug what will happen you will be getting a electric shock why so because our human body is a conductor we are standing on the earth and when we insert a finger in the electrical socket the electrons from the electrical sockets uh, travel through our body and try to reach to the earth so our body is a conductor and it helps in the conduction of electrons it helps in the production of current as and as the current is being produced due to that we get shock and there are the electrical accidents happening so this is just an example of open and closed circuit kindly do not go and try this at your home okay this is very much unsafe practice and you should be aware of all the electrical sockets around you should not play with these electrical equipments as these have hazardous impact even if you are cleaning your room and suddenly some water is spread in the electrical socket you should stay away from it and you need to dry it properly if you are not confident enough to make it dry you can ask the elders in your home or you can call up a electrician because these all have a high voltage and the current passing through these electrical sockets will definitely give a big blow and will be very much hazardous the incident is not good for anyone so one should be very much aware whenever he or she is doing anything related to the electricity okay so be safe read learn from these chapters these are not just the physics but a fundamental understanding of many processes in our day to day life now coming back to the subject if r is finite when r have some proper numeral value it is not infinite in this case the current flowing through the circuit is not zero and potential difference between a b or p and n is given by potential equals to potential of positive electrode potential of negative electrode minus the internal resistance into the current potential due to the internal the potential lost due to the internal resistance that will be given by the current into the internal resistance okay so minus this factor this is the overall potential difference of our electrolytic system now 
in practical calculations internal resistance of cells in the circuit may be neglected when the current i is such that it is more than the emf more than the electromotive forces okay most of the time you will see whenever we will be solving the problems we tend to neglect this internal resistance okay but when we will be solving questions after this section we will not neglect internal resistance now internal resistance of dry cell however is much higher than the common electrolyte cells this is a point to be remembered this point plays a important role when the questions based on assertion and reason are asked or the conceptual questions in your board examination is asked so always remember there are two types of cell one is having a solution in it and one is a dry cell the cells which we are mostly using are in dry in nature like they do not contain solution just see your laptops or mobiles if they will have solution it will keep on spilling here and there it will increase the weight of your electrical equipment so mostly we use dry cells and these dry cells have higher internal resistance than any electrolyte sol uh, solution containing cell okay so this is important with respect to your assertion reason and concept now from ohm's law how we can correlate the internal resistance we have v equals to ir v is given by current into resistance sorry that's what it is written v see from here this formula v is given electromotive force minus ir electromotive force equals to positive potential minus negative potential okay that is our electromotive force and ir is the potential due to internal resistance okay that from here we will find the value of the current through the system so i will derive for you people how it is coming see over here i equals to v see this whole concept i'll explain in the next slide in a proper derivation the maximum current that can be drawn from a cell where resistance is zero is given by i max equals to epsilon not upon r okay so let's just move to the next slide to get a better understanding of this derivation see first of all we have two electrodes one is having a positive potential and another one is having a negative potential then for in case of the open circuit we can define epsilon naught that is electromotive force electromotive force okay now this electromotive force in an open source is given by v minus v plus minus v minus and for an closed circuit electrolyte have some internal resistance that is given by small r due to which there is a potential due to internal resistance which is given by current into the internal resistance now the overall potential of system overall potential for system is given by v equals to e minus the internal potential okay this is equals to v plus minus v of minus minus i r okay now from ohm's law from ohm's law we have v equals to capital i capital r that is the externally added resistor okay now we will equate this equation number 1 and equation number 2 
equating 1 and 2. We will get V equals to IR equals to epsilon minus IR. Now we will solve this equation IR equals to epsilon minus IR. It will be IR plus I small r equals to epsilon. Common over here is I. We will get I into under the brackets r plus small r which is equals to epsilon and hence i equals to epsilon upon capital R plus the small r. Okay. Now we have seen that if r is r is equals to infinity i will be 0. This is i minimum. When r equals to 0 when there is no resistance available i will be maximum. That is i max. i equals to i max. What is the i max over here? i max equals to epsilon upon 0 plus small r. It will give us i max equals to epsilon upon r. Okay. So, this is the i max or the maximum current which can flow through the given circuit. Okay. Hope you have understood what is cell, how a cell is made, electrodes, flow of current, flow of electrons. Then what is electromotive force? Though called force, it is the potential difference. Then the internal resistance of a given cell and the formulation in case we are considering the internal resistance, how can we add and how can we find the current in case of a cell having good or not zero in, uh, internal resistance okay so that's all for today's class we'll start the next class and we'll be talking about the kirchhoff's rule that is the next topic so we'll meet in the next class till the time uh, read well and continue with the practices have a good day bye bye